district attorney, I don't see fit to follow such a course. Yes, you can quote me. Bye. This thing's a coroner's report. Max von Borg, bullet wound in head. Why are you showing it to me? Just listen to this. Has anybody invited you to join the Crusaders? These invidious invitations are handed out by a new group of local yes. hate Mr. Mongers. Randolph's here for his appointment. Tomorrow, I'll ask him to wait. Oh, and Mr. Walker, Mr. Hawley wants you to call her when you're free. Oh, that'll be another speech. I'll phone her Race prejudice and discrimination and make money out of it. What were you saying, Howard? You look at it. Read down there where it's marked. I traced some of their leaflets to a small print shop here in the city. A fellow named Max von Bohr prints them, but he isn't telling who pays for them. I'm out to uncover the patron of these lunatics who start hate campaigns. I'm out to find him and expose him. Well? A man named Max Borg prints leaflets for a hate group. A man named Max Borg kills himself. I want to look into it. When was this in Riggs' column? Today. When did Borg die? Today. Get Riggs down here. No, I can always do better with Charlie Riggs if I need him off my beat. Oh, you know him? Sure. He's going to be my brother-in-law any week now. All right. Go find him in some nightclub. You're the assistant district attorney in charge of nightclubs. Don't let Carolyn Riggs hear you say that. Hmm. I'm a reform man. Anyway, Charlie never goes to nightclubs. A very serious fellow, Charlie Riggs. <laughs> Charlie, what makes you think Borg was murdered? Sometimes a lot of people have to get killed to protect an industry. Our this hate thing is a big, fat racket, and it needs a lot of protecting. If your office knew its business, they'd have gone after these racketeers a long time ago. That's good newspaper copy, Charlie, but where would a racket like that pay off? Forming an organization. Membership dues, badges, buttons, magazine subscriptions, donations, even uniforms. Anti up to exploit the anti this or that. Any race or religion they can use as a scapegoat. Ignorance pays off, Howard. And the profits can climb into millions. Whatever happened to the old Charlie Riggs with his eye to a keyhole? I've got both eyes open these days. Now, if you guys will excuse me. You aren't going out again tonight. I've got some business, sorry. I never know where he goes. Well, Charlie's a big boy now. Sometimes he doesn't come home until morning. Now, you two can have the rest of the evening to yourselves with my blessing. How's that for a pal, huh? Ought to put me in right with the DA's office. Put me in right with the office. Come on down tomorrow and have a talk about hey, it. Hey, time. I've got to interview Mrs. Borg tomorrow. Own me a favor. And uh, thanks for the candy. Mr. Riggs wasn't trying to hurt your husband. I don't know. Mrs. Borg, you've seen this before, haven't you? Yes. Max Print this job. He did it last week. It's one of those invitations Riggs mentioned in his column. Join the Crusaders. Fight for Americanism. Where'd you get this? From Charlie. He's got quite a collection. He's still waiting outside? Yeah. Mrs. Borg, when was the last time Mr. Riggs came to see your husband? Last time? Yes, sir. Have Mr. Malloy's friend come in, please, Miss McConnor. Yes, sir. It was. Yes, the night before Max died. What about yesterday morning? Didn't you see anyone in the shop when you came down and found your husband's body? I ran downstairs. Only Max. Are you sure of that, Mrs. Borg? No one there? Did nobody want to kill Max. He killed himself. 
Come in. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Howard. Charlie. Not the man. Yes, you. You make Max go crazy. You make him take his own life. He murder Max. What do you say, Charlie? I've never seen anyone so afraid. Fear, Howard, fear. It's a terrible weapon. You saw what it did to Mrs. Borg this afternoon. I could see she was lying. She's afraid if she doesn't hang on to that suicide story, they'll get rid of her, too. Jack, set him up again. Sounds like Capone and Schultz and the mobs are back again. When the law closes in on one racket, the big boys always find another. With the mobsters, it was liquor and blood. With this outfit, it's hate and blood. But they're just harmless lunatics, these hate groups. Lunatics, yes. Especially the warp minds on top with a dream of power or gold or political success. But not harmless when the racket boys move in. It's Merry Christmas for a few smart operators when they find a soft touch like this. Charlie, what got you into this? I'm fed to the teeth seeing people pushed around. You know, I was born in this city, Howard. In our block, we had guys from practically every race and religion you ever heard of, and a couple you didn't. But we got along pretty well. Well, that's the way it ought to be. In our block, nobody cared what country your parents came from or where they went to church. Nobody called you nasty names until you were taught there were nasty names and some people were supposed to be called by them. Mix, Polacks, Wops, Lammies, Fix, Huggies. That's part of our history. America always has to melt away the differences between people. Sure, and most always you don't understand why they're supposed to be different. It's just somebody else's say so, somebody else's influence. Now we've got people around who want to make people hate each other, be afraid of each other, just so they can make money out of it. I don't like that. Look, Charlie, hold off these columns of yours for a week or so, will you? Give me time to run this down. Here's your rundown right here in my case. And I've got a fistful of new stuff. You're getting interested, huh? Sure, I'm interested. But we're not playing with kids. Take it easy and wait a while. And lose a great story? Have my readers think I'm scared? Give me time to find out who murdered Borg. Give me a week. Sorry, my friend. Told you last night that's all I wanted, one week. I mean it, Charlie. Take it easy. Nothing doing. I'm a little guy, but I don't scare easy. Oh, uh, pay the tab, huh? You're the new boy in this club. I never drink alone. That can be fixed.
The janitor, Mr. Wachinsky, found the body. The only way they could identify him was by his pocketbook. His face. When Mrs. Wachinsky came and got him. Oh, he couldn't have done it deliberately, Howard. Charlie would never. Of course not, baby. <laughs> Anybody who ever knew Charlie at all. How's it coming, Wiley? Find anything? Not much, Mr. Malloy. All the fingerprints seem to belong to Miss Riggs and the deceased. Carol, is anything missing? I uh, talked to Miss Riggs earlier. His briefcase, he apparently. He always brought it home with him. He did most of his writing here. You check his office? Find anything? Not that they could see. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out about a lot of things. Assistant District Attorney Malloy charges murder and hints hate conspiracy and death of countless pals. Oh, you did, eh? The reporter asked me what I thought. So you told him? Yep. The time is now to appoint a special prosecutor capable of handling this vicious outbreak of violence in our fair city. We want... They want action and they want it now. Yes? Mrs. Hoffley's here for her appointment. Oh, is that late? All right, send her in. Howard, there's no evidence that Riggs was murdered. There's no evidence that anything he told you was true. He's dead, isn't he? Oh, I'm sorry. You did. Oh, come in, Grace. Just finishing. This is my assistant, of Howard. Of course. How do you do, Mrs. Hoffley? One of Frank's brightest young men. Oh. <laughs> you mustn't let him overwork you, Mr. Malloy. Well, we're always busy, Mrs. All right, Howard. Go ahead with this case. But if what Rick said was true, watch out. He was right. Forget he was a pal of yours. Use your head instead of your heart. I don't want this office to look any worse than it does already. That's uh, hardly possible. Frank making another speech for you? To Dick Betterman's dinner next week, I hope. Grace, you can lead an old horse to dinner, but you can't expect him to speak. Nice to have seen you again, Mrs. Oh, Hartley. Oh, thank you. Remember what I said, Howard? Nothing foolish. I'll try. Sit down, Grace. Now then, what's this about a speech? Frank, we need you at the speaker's table. With you there, it'll be almost as though Jonathan himself were present. Everybody remembers that you were his last protege, that you worked with him until the very end. I'd never be district attorney today if it hadn't been for Judge Hartley's sponsorship and guidance. We'll never forget him, will we, Frank? No honest politician could ever forget your husband. What kind of speech will you make? We must send some sort of announcement to the papers, you know. Perhaps I could say a few words about civil liberty in our great metropolis. Good. You know, a free city with freedom for all men. Uh, that sort of thing. Fine. You have nothing to prove that Borg was murdered. And now you've got nothing to prove that Riggs was murdered. Nothing. Howard, are you asleep? Howard. Huh? Oh, almost. I guess I'd better be getting home. Very tired. Oh, all night. Why don't you stretch out here? Take a nap. No, I'd better go home. Get a clean shirt. And start out again. Thanks for lunch, baby. How do you feel? Scared. It's all so sudden. I just don't know why. All that work, courage, going after these thugs. He never realized, I guess, how they could turn their viciousness against him. It's awful. Feeling of helplessness. No, oh, we're not so helpless. I'm going to follow every lead Charlie left. I wish he'd told me more. Now, what about tonight? You can't stay here. Why not? Well, I don't think you should. It'll be all right. Mrs. Willis across the hall insists on staying. You're sure you'll let her? I don't think I can stop her. All right, I'll phone you later. I'll be waiting. Well, I'll be off. Oh, I wanted to show you this. I found it on a shelf in Charlie's closet. Oh, 
wonder where it came from. I really don't know. Signed with just initials. Yes, but there's something written on the back of it. Well, that's Charlie's handwriting. Let's have the phone. Sigmund Kostovic, Rembrandt Studio. A customer? Who? A client. No clients today. Uh, telegram. No telegram today. Oh, please, Mr. Kostarik, I've got to talk to you. I'm an admirer of yours. Admirer? Admirer? You're charming. Won't you come in? Thanks. Now, what do you want here? We all want something. Gold, or wine, or the warmth of beautiful women. But what do you want here? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Kostarik. Some old fraternity brothers of mine are planning a reunion. We were wondering if you'd make up a poster for us. A poster? A poster. I do not draw posters. I'm an artist, a painter. You will go now? Oh, come on now, Mr. Kostarik. You've made posters before. Have I? Don't you remember? Often it is not wise to remember. Go. Why? A beautiful woman. That's your story. It is the oldest story. Well, there's a beautiful woman. Ah, uh, the beauty of you. Who is she? A model. An old friend. I'd like to have that. It's already sold. What's it doing here, then? I'm going to hang it at an exhibition of mine at the Contemporary Museum next week. It will be my first one-man show in America. It certainly is different from the big blonde head on the Crusader post. You are from the police, I think. Not exactly. What does that mean? District Attorney's office. Oh. You'd better think back about that poster. Yes, I will. I, I will indeed. You are going now to get the police? Matter of fact, I'm not. I'm on my way home to change my shirt. For something? I said, were you looking for something? What's your name? Miller. Take it easy. No identification, huh? I've seen this one before. Who is she? Just a dame. I don't know who. I saw it on the paper. It reminded me of my grandmother. Make better jokes, kid. You're in trouble. What are these? If you need help, see the angel. Who's this angel? How should I know? Where'd you get these cards? Someone wanted me to see the guy. With a fresh card for every visit, huh? What were you after in my apartment? Just on a little visit. Just on a little visit? Okay, kid, I'll send you a little visit. Give you time to think up some more answers. Breaking and entering, assault and battery. See the angel, huh? I think I'll do a little visiting myself. Yeah, I could use some help. Where can I find the angel? You're new around here, huh? Thanks. What do you sell on this bush cart? Apples, oranges, grapes, everything in season. Please, you fix it the summons up. Please. Pardon me. Where can I find the angel?
I'm the angel. What can I do for you, my friend? Stay off the main streets with your push card and you won't get another summons. Here. Pay the fine. Thank you, Mr. Angel. Thank you. Harry, take over. Sure, boss. Come into my office. We can talk there. Right. Anything sure, you say. Sure, and the old man is asking. Sit down, mister. Malloy. Malloy. Yes, I know. That boy Knuckles in trouble again, huh? He told me his name was Miller. Yes, he has a lot of names. Around here we call him Knuckles. But we don't let him around here anymore, those punk kids. You know, sometimes you can't help him. What did he do now? He hid himself in my apartment, tried to give me the business. And what happened? Last I saw him, he was riding off in a little black wagon. Uh-huh. And what brings you here, Mr. Malloy? Well, I found this card in the kid's pocket. It says, see the angel. So you came to see me. Check. Good. I give away thousands of cards like that. What can I do for you, my friend? Answer a few questions. Such as? Do you care for drink? Never cared more. Why are you called the angel? Well, my name is Angelo Agostini, and all my life, I enjoy doing things for people. Well. Here's to the first angel I ever met. And here's to our next special prosecutor. Who would that be? You, I think, Mr. Malloy. You've been making quite an impression on this town. I knew who you were when you first came in. You've been driving the newspapers crazy. They're demanding the governor appoint a special prosecutor on this case. No chance I'd get it. You've got every chance. Mr. Malloy, I'm curious. Just how far do you expect to go in this case? At least as far as whoever murdered Charles Riggs. You're a tough guy, Mr. Malloy. I can see that. And I like tough guys. Who are tough about the right things. Perhaps in my fashion, I could be of some help to you. Like I told you, I enjoy doing things for others. What can you do for me? This is the angel calling. Is the big fellow in? Thanks. Keeps me young and happy doing things for others. Hello? How's the golf these days? <laughs> fine, fine. Say, what are you doing about appointing a special prosecutor on this Riggs case? I got Malloy here with me from the DA's office. Seems to me he'd make a fine special prosecutor. I thought if you talk to the boss, put pressure on the right people. Fine, I'd appreciate that. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I won't be. Goodbye. What's your angle, Agostini? Must I have an angle? Who was that you just called? Do we have to mention names? You make a phone call, and just like that, I'm special prosecutor? Of course, you'll have to do something about it yourself. Get some of those city groups tonight. You know what you need for a little help. Let's keep in touch with them all. Uh, let's try to help each other. Yeah. <laughs> Found quite a lot about the young lady. Name's Whitfield. Whitfield? Barbara Whitfield. Well, this is a pleasant change from office routine. What'd she do besides pose for pictures? Quite a few things. She's worked in nightclubs. Very fancy ones. No dives. No dives, huh? For a while, she worked as a model in the Fifth Avenue dress shop. Two years ago, she sang in a Broadway musical. Quite a dish. She singing any place now? Nice place over on the east side. You know, low lights, and soft music. My last love, number nine, my best love, is you Thanks. 
Is that why we came here? To hear that singer? Well, I wanted to get a look at her, but I also wanted to spend some time with you. I really shouldn't have come to a nightclub. Nonsense. Do you could to get away from that apartment. Look, you're going to move from there, aren't you? I don't think so. At least not for a while yet, anyway. I keep hoping I'll find something. Some clue. Oh, that reminds me. We can't stay here very long. My assistant Quigley's waiting for me. I think we've got to leave. Miss the place, Howard. Presnell reported they arrived here about a half hour ago with a load of leaf. I'd like to get a look inside. Next to the elevator. That's the watch. Anybody else around? Yeah. Yeah? Who? Oh. Ah, you got the delivery entrance. She's downstairs. Who's downstairs? I don't know. Downstairs. Two or three of them. We got a chance. Let's go in. Sure. I'll get you downstairs. Yeah, wait a minute. right in the middle of Main Street here. Hey, wait a minute. I wonder what's inside these things. Let's look. This looks like some more board for it. Yeah. Here's some kind of shirt. Uniform shirt. Fancy dress costumes and everything. Even buttons for the lapel. Souvenir? Thanks. Somebody must be making a lot of money out of these things. You mean they sell these uniforms? They don't give them away. If you want to play Crusader, you got to buy a uniform, badges, belts, caps, all that organization stuff. This is how wars are started in a dusty warehouse. Who do you really think is behind these Crusaders? Let's find out what's going on down there. shop downtown. I haven't watched 24 hours a day. Tend to that, boss. Malloy? Yes, Mrs. Hartley. Well, uh... Well, yes, but it'll have to be after 7. Yeah, fine. Old Mother Hartley? Yeah. Got to speak for your supper? Oh, no. Send you in. Mr. Malloy. Thanks. Come in, Mr. Malloy. Mm. So glad you could drop by. Frankly, your call aroused my curiosity. Do sit down. Thanks. Howard, may I call you Howard? Yes, of course. Do you want to be special prosecutor? Huh? <laughs> because you can be if you want to be. Some rather influential people think you're the man for the job. Well, Charlie Riggs started it. I'd like a chance to finish it. They've already been in touch with the governor. Really? Then I guess it's okay with the DA. Frank, he won't object when he knows that I'm supporting you. I'm very grateful, Mrs. Hartley. Now, one thing. I'm told that a small-time politician named... Agostini had something to do with suggesting your name a special prosecutor. Well, I guess that's right. He did. With this man's reputation is... 
unsavory, to say the least. I suggest that you disavow Mr. Agostini immediately. Considering disavowed? In that case, I think you might consider yourself appointed. Malloy, trying to reach you all afternoon. <laughs> Other people can call you a special prosecutor, but to me, you'll always be my favorite assistant. That you, Malloy? Agostini. <laughs> I phoned to congratulate you on your appointment. <laughs> what? Well, if there's anything I can do, let me know. Yeah, call the angel. Well, Howard, we did it. Your special prosecutor. I expect great things of you. By the way, could you drop over tomorrow night? I want you to meet some people. I've sent you a confidential file on some of them. Men who have tremendous influence. Take a look at my notes before you come over. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. About six tomorrow? Right. Bye. Mrs. Hartley sent you this envelope about an hour ago by special messenger. Yeah, she just told me. Things are moving pretty fast, aren't they? Yeah, in a circle. I wish there was something I could do to help you, Howard. I usually like to help myself. That's fine, too. But what about these wires? All these papers you have to sign. I could run errands. I hate to keep you out of this, baby. Howard. We picked her up at the airport. That man, he has no right to stop me. Where were you going? Yeah, One-way ticket to Mexico I City. take a little trip. An expensive trip. Who arranged it? Nobody. Somebody ordered you to leave. Who was it? Please. I have had so much trouble. Without my husband, I don't know what to do. Mrs. Bork, why are you so frightened? What is it? Someone called her this afternoon, told her to catch the next plane to Mexico City. You know about that? We've had your telephone tap for several days. Please, Mrs. Bork, for your own sake, tell us. Who called you? I, uh, I don't know. It was a uh, strange voice. Booker is a material witness, without faith. What does this mean? This means you'll be safe, Mrs. Ford. If we let you go home, those men might kill you the way they killed your husband. You won't let them kill me. Come along, Mrs. Ford. Don't you worry. Mr. Malloy will take good care of you. Won't you, Howard? Sure. I'll take good care of both of you. You want to help, huh? Okay, you've got the job. This is the place for you, right? I wanted you to say that. I did. Anything else you wanted me to say? Anything else you want to say? That'd take a long time. Oh. Mr. Nichols' papers didn't think much of my appointment. 
Harry against you? Really? Well, surely it's only because he's opposing his local competitor, the Express Journal. Oh, now, really, Grace, who wants to look into a man's motives at a gay time like this? We're all here for a little relaxation from serious things. Nichols is a lord of the press, began as a copy boy and worked his way to the top by inheriting a chain of newspapers from his father. Give Nichols any trouble and you'll be the subject of a furious editorial the next day, simultaneously in 34 newspapers. Well, I think this is the time to discuss Mr. Malloy's business or mine. Why, Harry, I thought you did all your business at cocktail parties. Sometimes, Grace, your polite little jokes aren't very polite. Or very little. Which brings us to Tom Waldron, Jr. Mr. Malloy, may I present the worst-dressed radio executive in the industry and the only really frivolous mind you'll meet this afternoon. If Grace hadn't been Judge Hartley's wife, she'd not get away with such casual slander. Waldron is a schemer and a fool. He wants to get into politics, but then who doesn't? Like a lot of people, he thinks society is tumbling and that the Waldron plan for social reorganization must be applied at once or we perish. And if Grace ever runs out of bright conversation, all she has to do is to remember the judge's epigrams. <laughs> you are a rascal, Custring. A complete rascal. I acknowledge it. And here's Stuart Pemberton, public relations. Hello, Mr. Malloy. Or should I say private relations? You shouldn't, Grace. May I introduce Sigmund Kostrick, Mrs. Hartley, Mr. Malloy. Mr. Kostrick and I have met. I, uh, I don't seem to recall our meeting. Oh, well, I must be mistaken. If you'll excuse me. Look here, Malloy. This crusade of yours. Tongue in cheek, isn't it? Well, hardly. Don't tell me you're the quixotic defender of the rights of man. The Express Journal says you are. It's hard to tell what you mean. What I mean is you can't be falling for your own publicity. I can't help thinking, Malloy, that you're stirring up. Harrington's a big time fixer. He's a fool, too, but very influential. I can't tell you anything about him that he won't tell you himself in conversation. Be careful of this man. The right to hate is just as inalienable as, as inalienable as the right to free speech. You've got to defend that too, you know. Inalienable is a very important word, Mr. Pemberton. I'm sure it's hard to say on purpose. Never mind the remarks, young man. I'm talking about the history of man. Out of hatred came the triumph of one group over another, the elimination of the misfit and the weak, the creative evolution of a superior class. Don't you see, Malloy? Out of it came our great industrial civilization. And out of it came a war with 20 million dead. Oh. I feel obliged to interrupt this conversation. Will you excuse us, Stuart, please? Bad politics, Howard. A bad man. I agree. And a man with the habit of victory. Cocktail? No, thanks. Andrew, bring Mr. Malloy a scotch and... Uh, water, please. Yeah. You're welcome. Grace, Sherry, you must come over here for a moment just to settle a point for us. Apparently unnecessary to an argument. Will you excuse me, please? Of course. That was mine. Yes, I know. Thank you. I wonder if your name fits the way you look. Malloy is my name. Howard Malloy. Good. Good what? Good guessing. That's who I thought you were. How? Everybody here has been talking about you this afternoon. And you're the only stranger who looks as if he ought to be called Howard. You're a special something or other, aren't you? Prosecutor. What do you do? Sing? Yes, obviously. You ever relax? From what? Singing. As often as possible. What about the song a minute ago? That was just for myself. I like to do things for myself once in a while. Doesn't that happen often? Now stop this. 
I never answer questions on an empty stomach. I'm hungry, too. You with somebody? That's a very large question. I'm not with Harry, anyway. I, uh, I like the song, Barbara. The song, Harry? Thank you. Howard, please forgive me. Did you finally get a drink? Yes, I did, Mrs. Hartley. Thank you. You've met more strangers today than I have. I was just getting acquainted when Nichols arrived. Who's she with? Goodness knows. But our Mr. Pemberton's been looking most possessive. And Mr. Costerick. I know. Your office called, Mr. Malloy, and Mr. Quigley is waiting for you. They said it was important. Yes, thanks. Does that mean you have to go? Yes, right away. Oh, well, I'll have Andrew fetch your hat. Thanks. Good night, Miss Whitfield. Good night, Mr. Malloy. What did you want? I just wanted to see you again, is all. Didn't you want to see me again? You're still a man with a lot of questions, aren't you? Yeah. Didn't you want to see me again? Yes. All right, then. How did you get my number? That's easy, where I work. Is everything easy for you? No. It's just as well. Oh, please, no pictures. This is for the house collection, sir. That's going to look as if the drinks weren't very good. Maybe they can paint in a smile. You're through, aren't you? Sure. Let's get out of here. Got to change. Did you see the show tonight? Most of it. Like it? I like you. Didn't you think the boy with the harp was good? I, uh... I didn't know this. I was waiting for you. Well, I won't be long. I'll pardon your back. What? About face, the prosecutor. Oh, sure. Is this visit um, business or pleasure? Right now, it's your business and my pleasure. We can go somewhere else. People always want to go somewhere else. Do you blame them? It depends. This wall is very uninteresting. Patience, patience. I'm changing my mind. About what? About you. All right, at ease. Changing from what to what? From maybe, perhaps. Are you always so uncertain about things? Things? People. Aren't you? Sometimes. Birds of a feather. Special prosecutor turns playboy. I should have broken that girl's camera last night. Forget about last night. Have you forgotten about it? Not yet, but I'm trying. Why? It doesn't figure. With what? With you. What are you after? You. Look out, Howard. Look out. For what? Don't play with me. Who's playing? If you meant everything last night, then look out. I told you before everything's easy for you. Too easy. Not always. No? When was it? I don't know. Maybe you're right. Am I? Matter of fact, things have been kind of easy for me. Take the way I got to be special prosecutor. What do you mean? It's as though somebody fixed it, or had to fix it. Fixed it? Yeah. You must have smiled at someone, the way you smile at me. People should be careful of that smile. People should be careful of a lot of things about you. 
You know, even angels can get their wings clipped. You got the scissors? For my wings? Take a look at this, Malloy, and keep looking at it so it doesn't happen again. That's no way to run a special investigation. Now stay out of trouble. Trouble? Really? Am I a lot of trouble? Women always are. Mm -hmm. Beautiful women, anyway. Of course. That's what men always like. The beauty? The trouble. Perhaps you'd like this little lady better, Miss Whitfield. No, thank you. This is the one for me. Does he have a name? Yes, it's Benny. <laughs> Benvenuto, really. Hmm. I used to have a cat they called Hadrian the Seventh. We ended up calling him Harry. Why, yes. Wasn't that the cat Mr. Pemberton bought for you? Yes. It was. Oh, uh, well, uh, will you take Benny with you, or shall we send him? I'll take him with me. Do you have one of those, those carrying boxes? Oh, yes, the traveling case. I'll get one for you. I always thought you bought cats at a special place, a cat farm or something, where they bred them and trained them. They trained them here, but not out of the last shred of their character. Anyway, I like to train them myself. What happened to Hadrian the Seventh? I got tired of him. Why did you come over to me at that party, Howard? Because you were the only person who didn't look as if you belonged there. Really? I belong anywhere I'm wanted. Do you? Don't I? This is a nice one. It's finished in leatherette. May I take him? What is this great interest in cats, anyway? I have a friend who doesn't like cats. Can you lend me $35? Why, sure. I think so. It's for Benny. Well, can't I... Would you like to? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. It's the thought, not the cat. I know he'll be well behaved. Do you? Here you are. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Barbara. Barbara, darling. Hi, Lenny. How are you? Fine. Fine. You? Going along? You know Howard Malloy, Lenny? Leonard Lyon, Howard. How do you do? In a hurry, Lenny. Bye. Nice seeing you. Now, who was that? Bye. Leonard Lyon, my sweet. He writes that column, The Lion's Den. <laughs> This is too much. Putting cats on your expense sheet. One cat. Thirty-five dollars. Line of duty, Frank. Better stick to the obvious accessories. Oh, by the way, somebody sprung your little gunman friend this morning. What? I ordered him held without fail. Couldn't be done. I don't notice, Charlie. Then we should have made some up. You should have. But you've been so busy in nightclubs and pet shops. You're making a fool out of yourself and the whole department. Now, Howard, you've got to stop seeing this Whitfield girl. Playboy prosecutor. I'm seeing her this afternoon, Frank, in about an hour. Yes, in pink tights and a high wire in front of City Hall, I suppose. No. In her apartment. It has to stop. There's got to be an end to it and right away. You understand? There must be a finish to the whole thing this afternoon. We can't let it go any further. What do you mean, we? I mean, those are my instructions, and I agree with them. You're full of little shocks and surprises these days, aren't you? Yeah. So is life. Our kind of life, anyway. I don't get it. First, I'm told to make sparks with my wine, I get along fine. And then, told to stop, put an end to it. This afternoon. How? I don't care how you do it, he's coming here, isn't he? You know that. You told me to invite him. I didn't know whether you reached him or not, as all. Ooh, you're so touchy these days. What's the matter, my angel? Upset again? Afraid things are being found out about you and me? Take it easy. I'm talking business now. I know you are. Say you talk business, my pet. You do it so rudely. Just do what you're told. What else do I ever do? When Malloy comes, tell him anything you like. If you're going away for a trip, 
or you're tired of them, or a husband has come back. Husband? Whee! Anything you like. But finish it. And if he doesn't take finish for an answer? Get tough, aggravate him, insult him. <laughs> Set him on fire. Now cut it out. Maybe you better get out of town. Maybe you better really go away for a while. Hmm? Take a little trip. Would you miss me? Like my next breath. Who would that be? Probably the man with the dynamite to put under uh, Mr. Now, please. Oh, relax. It's just the man from the liquor store. Malloy likes scotch. Come on in, Sam. Milkman. Hi. Here's your stuff, Miss Whitfield. Charge it. Don't I always, Sam? Sure, Miss Whitfield. I just like to hear you talk. Next time, Sam. So, now that I'm making headway with our handsome prosecutor, now I stop, huh? I'm glad you finally understand what to do. I know what to do, but I certainly don't understand it. Oh, don't worry, honey. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't understand. Until afterwards. Come on, Knuckles. Leave our little black friend to Mr. Malloy. He likes cats, too. What do you mean you're going away? Something wrong? I, uh, I need a change. Relaxation, sunshine. I think I'll go to Florida or someplace. I've been thinking about it for some time, about getting away. Away from anything special? What do you mean? There comes a time when the wisest thing to do is get away. I don't know what you're talking about. Who would I want to get away from? Me, maybe. You? Maybe? That's what I said. All right, because I'm tired of you and me. I don't want any more, and that's that. There. You can't escape from me, darling. Really? Can't I? <laughs> no. You're stuck. You're it. You're in the wrong conversation. Who is it you're afraid of? I'm not afraid of anyone. All right, if you won't tell me, I'll tell you. All right. Tell me, then. There's a hard-eyed little gunman, calls himself Miller. Other people call him Knuckles. And there's an artist with a scrubby beard. He painted your portrait. His name's Costa. There's another guy, a very important guy, calls himself the Angel. He's somebody you might want to say goodbye to. Stop acting like a prosecutor. I don't know any of these people. Never heard of them. Don't lie to me, Barbara. Oh, stop it. I'm trying to help you, to warn you. When these people finish using you... Nobody's using me. They murdered Borg and Riggs. And heaven only knows what's happened to Costa, Rick. Ziggy? Yes, he's been missing for three days. And when they're through with you... You knew what they were up to. Why didn't you stay out of it? I couldn't stay out of it. They wouldn't let me. Now, that's more like it. There's no point in lying. Oh, Howard, hold me. Help me. I can't help you, baby, unless you help me. We need your evidence. Double crossing. You're using me just like all the rest. Now look, Bob. Why, you? These people you're mixed up with don't throw things. They put a bullet in you and put you out of window. Let go of me. There's a lot of questions for you to answer before you let you go. Don't.
Mr. Malloy. Mr. Malloy. What are you doing here? The door was open and I came in. I couldn't see what was happening. Nothing was happening. She pushed me. That's so all. Believe she's dead. Dead? Barbara. Barbara was alive when I passed out. You must have come in here. No. Why would I have waited for you to awaken in my Your fingerprints are on this gun. And so are yours? Yeah, but I know I didn't kill her. Please. What are you doing? Calling Hamas. Wait. I swear I had nothing to do with this. I swear, I swear. Then what are you doing here? When you got mixed up with the Crusaders, Costa Rica, you got mixed up with murder. I did not intend to get mixed up with them. It was all because of that woman. Barbara? No, not Barbara. Grace Hartley. Grace Hartley? Yes. She's the one who is behind all this. She's the one who is Bernita. Can you prove that? I was painting her portrait. I was in her library, and I discovered some papers that I thought interesting and important. What kind of papers? Oh, names, figures. These crusaders make money, you know. These papers told me a lot about where they get the money and what they do with it. I took them away with me, for what they were worth. What? Please. Grace Hartley could help me in my career. She had influence. And she had provided me, among other comforts, with my first one-man show. It opens tomorrow at the Contemporary Museum. You told me the first time I met you. Where are these papers? I want to see them. At the museum. Yeah? They're hidden behind one of my paintings. They are between the canvas and the backing of the frame. Please, now you do not believe I killed Barbara? Oh, Carolyn, quickly there. Grace. Oh, I thought you'd gone. We saw your car outside. We decided to wait. What's going on upstairs? Never mind, nothing. <laughs> Everything, give me your gun. That don't make sense. Give me your gun. Give me your. Where's my lawyer? He's upstairs in the office. What's going on? I haven't time to talk now. Don't wait around, dear. You might get into trouble. Where are you going now? I have an important call to me. I'll go in there. Bring the car around for me. Let's see what she's up to. Look, call homicide for me, will you? Barbara Whitfield's been murdered. Tell him to come to 689 East 57th Street. Yeah, I'm still there. But when the boys get here, I'll be on my way to the Contemporary Museum with Sigmund Costery. Got it? Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm coming as fast as I can. I'm sorry, ma'am. We're closed for the night. But I just want to go upstairs to one of the gals. I can't let you do that, ma'am. No visitors after hours. Well, I was here earlier, and I left my purse. Well, you just have to come back in the morning, ma'am. I got my order. But I...
There seems to be somebody in there. Must be a guard. to find the papers. I had to get them. I was not too quick. I had no gun. Where did she get you? We were the same kind of target for her. Just under the shoulder. She killed Barbara. She was in the apartment and she heard me telling you where the papers were. She killed Barbara. Ahoy, where are you? In here. This looks like the last act of Hamlet. It's the last act for all kinds of things. Brace yourself, Frank. Grace Hartley. I'll tell you about it later. Here's part of it. All right, Carolyn. Is Carolyn here? She brought it here. I made her way out in the court. It was kind of noisy in here. Time. We'll put it all together. 